If you're building a distributed system, you will probably run into the Saga pattern. A Saga is a set of local transactions across your microservices which come together to execute some business operation. A natural question to ask is, what if some step in the Saga fails? Well, that's what I want to answer in today's video. Let me walk you through the setup that we have before we tackle error handling in a Saga. So I have this command which creates a new order and when the order is created and persisted in the database, we publish an event to the bus, which is the order created event. This event subsequently starts the order create saga, which consists of several steps required to initiate an order. So let's see what those steps are. So the first step is the order created event, which begins our saga, and it starts off by sending an order confirmation email to the customer. After the email is sent, the corresponding event is published, and then we send another command, which is the reserve order stock, which is going to go to our warehouse and reserve some stock for this order. Then after this completes, we have the command for creating a payment request. And if this also completes successfully, we mark the payment request as sent and complete the saga. Let's see how this looks like in action. I'm going to send a post request to our API, which is going to create a new order, and then it's going to start the order create saga. We first hit the breakpoint inside of the create order command handler, and I'm just going to press continue and head over to this line here, which is going to publish the order created event. So if I hit continue, I'm going to hit the breakpoint in the order create saga, this step is going to create the send order confirmation email command and send it over the bus. So if I press continue, we're going to hit the breakpoint in the handler for this message. This will access the email service, send the corresponding email to the customer, and then it's going to publish the order confirmation email sent event. So let's press continue. We hit another breakpoint in our saga, which handles this event that we just published and it sets the confirmation email sent property on the saga to true and then it's going to send out another command to reserve the stock for this order. So if I hit continue, we hit the handler for the reserve order stock message or command which is going to head over to the stock service, reserve the required stock for this order and then publish a corresponding event. So I'm going to hit continue again and we are back in the saga setting the stock reserve to true and publishing a new command which is going to create a payment request. So let's hit continue. We are in the handler for recreate order payment request which is going to head over to the payment service and try to create the payment request for our order. So if it succeeds and it does we're going to publish the order payment request created and finally if we head back to our saga and handle this event we are going to mark the saga as complete, finishing the entire process. This is obviously the happy path in the saga, and it assumes that nothing can go wrong, but things can definitely go wrong for multiple reasons, so let's see what we can do about it. I'll head over to the handler of the create order payment request, and we're going to add a try catch statement around this method to simulate that something went wrong. So let's add the try catch statement. I'm going to move all of this logic in the try block and in the catch block, we're going to do something like this. Let's first log the error on the exception. So we're going to say payment request failed and we're also going to pass the exception itself. To simulate that the payment failed in the payment service after this 1000 millisecond delay, I'm going to be just throwing some sort of exception and let's just say throw new exception payment fail. All right. So after one second, this is going to throw the exception and back in our message handler, we're going to enter the catch statement and we need to think about how we want to implement error handling in the saga itself. There are two main reasons why a step in the saga could fail. The first reason is technical, meaning some service is unavailable and there's really nothing that you can do about this. And the second reason is business oriented, where some business rule was broken and the step simply couldn't be completed. 
An example of a broken business rule would be when we create a payment request, there aren't enough funds in the bank account to pay for this order, or maybe the credit card could have expired or something else. So this is a business rule failure, and we should handle it differently from a technical failure, like a database not being available so you can't access it to persist some data. In the case of a technical failure, a good solution could simply be to retry processing the message after some time, and in the case of a business failure, depending on the severity, you could try to do some different things. For example, you could decide that this isn't that big of a failure and it's safe to retry to process this message later, or you can say this is something that I can't recover from and I need to start a compensating transaction. So I'm going to show you how to do that and we need to start by defining a failure message. Here I have the order payment request created event which we published in the happy path. I'm going to create another event which is going to represent that the order payment request has failed. And we're going to handle this differently from the created event. So if I go back to the saga, I need to say that we also handle the order payment request failed event. And then we're going to discuss how we want to handle this message. So we need to implement the corresponding handle event and we need a way to correlate this event with the order. So we're going to use just the order ID as the correlation value, and let's focus on the handle method for this event. This is the entry point for the failure path in our saga, and what we're going to do is we're going to check on the saga data if the stock for this order was successfully reserved. If it was successfully reserved, we want to send another message which is going to say release order stock. So I don't have this message and I'm going to create it. So let's add it here. So this is going to be the release order stock message. And now if I go back to my saga, everything should be okay. After I have published this message, I need to handle it somehow. So I'm going to add a respective handler, which is going to be the release order stock handler. So let's make it internal and sealed. So I made a typo, let's fix that and fix the file name. So we're going to implement the iHandle messages interface and we're going to handle the release order stock message. I'm going to inject just two services here. One is going to be my iStock service and I'm also going to inject the iBus from Rebus to be able to send the message after I have released the stock. Let's create a constructor to inject the services and make this asynchronous. And inside of the handle method, I'm going to say stock service. And I don't have a method for that right now, but it's going to be called release for order async. And we're going to pass it the order ID. So let's go ahead and create this method in our service, which is going to be called release for order async. So it's basically going to do the opposite of the reserve method. The reserve method was heading to the warehouse and reserving a set of line items for this order. The release method is going to compensate for this action and it's going to release the line items that were previously reserved for this order so that they can be used for completing and fulfilling other orders in the system. After I have released the items on this order, I need to send a message for the bus to say that this has happened. So let's say order stock released event. So this is what we are going to publish after we release the line items for the order. I'm going to create a new order stock released event and let's pass it the order ID. Now we need to handle this back in our saga. So let's add another I handle messages implementation of the order stock released event. So we're going to implement this interface. I'm going to add a correlation here. So order stock released, and let's implement the handle method. Let's say that after handling this event, we know that we have already handled the order payment request failed. We send the command for releasing the stock for this order, and this successfully completed. So now we are at the point where we compensated for the failed payment request by releasing the stock in the warehouse. 
that has also completed successfully and we're handling this event and we need to consider what we want to do next. A few of the possible options could be notifying the customer that we are canceling this order and we need to trigger the order cancellation in the system. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to define another message which I will call cancel order. Let's also, for example, set the stock reserved to false and then we're going to send this command. I'm going to define it here. So let's say public record cancel order and we're going to give it the order ID property. If I head back to the saga, this is going to be okay and we need a handler for this message. So I'm going to add the cancel order handler. I'm going to make it internal and sealed and it's going to implement I handle messages and the message that is handling is the cancel order message. So it's just going to inject the I application DB context from the constructor and it's going to use it to cancel this order. What this is going to look like is I'm first going to load the order from the database by saying context orders and I'm going to say single async and the condition is going to be that the order ID is equal a new strongly typed order ID because that's what I'm using in the domain layer and then once we have the order I'm going to just call the cancel method on this order to cancel it. This could internally raise a domain event which could trigger some other actions in the system but let's not bother with that right now. So we're going to then say context save changes async and then we need to publish an event saying that the order was cancelled. So I'm going to inject the I bus interface, inject it from the constructor and let's create an order cancelled event message. So order cancelled event and this is what we're going to publish in the cancel order handler after we persist the changes in the database. So let's say bus publish new order cancelled event. We're going to give it the order ID value and finally we can go back to the saga and handle this last message by saying I handle messages order cancelled event and let's implement this and inside of here we can just say mark as complete and we can return task completed task and this completes the failure path in the saga. Let's again try to create our order which is going to trigger the saga and in the payment service we are going to throw an exception and start the compensating transaction. We are in the create order command handler handling the create order command. This is going to persist the order in the database and publish the order created event. So let's publish this event and we land in the order create saga handling this first message. Now let's send the confirmation email to the customer. This is the handler which is going to access the email service, send the email and then publish the order confirmation email sent event. If I hit continue, we're going to head back to the order create saga to try to send the reserve order stock command. So let's press continue. Now we are in the handler of the reserve order stock command. So we are going to execute this service, reserve some stock in the warehouse and publish the respective event. So if I press continue, we land back in the saga again. Now we are going to try to create a payment request for this order. So let's go into the handler of this message and here the payment service is going to throw an exception. So if I press continue, we're going to catch the exception which says that the payment has failed and we're going to publish the order payment request failed event. I'm going to hit continue and we are back in our saga beginning our compensating transaction which was started by publishing this event. So if the stock has been reserved and it has, then we're going to send a release order stock command. So let's hit send and see what happens. So we land in the handler for this message. We access the stock service and release the stock for this order. After this completes, we're going to publish the order stock released event. I'm going to hit continue. We land back in the saga, this time handling the order stock released event. 
we're going to set the stock reserve property to true and send the cancel order command. We're going to then handle this cancel order command by loading the order from the database, invoking the cancel method, which could trigger some domain event and some other operations down the line. We persist this in the database and we finally publish an order canceled event to the bus. And lastly, we handle this event in the saga by marking it as complete, which completes our journey through the compensating transaction. This is just one example of error handling inside of a saga with a set of compensating transactions, but ultimately it's going to be a business decision of what is the best way to handle this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and until next time, stay awesome.